Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise it. Let's praise it. Hallelujah. was a crowd gathered around Jesus and they were touching him they were touching him all over jostling him brushing him back and forth but in the middle of that press there was one that reached out and got a hold of the hem of his garment and Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? The disciples said, Lord, everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me, and it took something out of me. It took something out of me. And then the Bible says, when she saw she wasn't hid, reckon what was going on in her life that made her stand out in a crowd. Her life had been changed forever. You should have been there when I prayed through. The church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. I said, you should have been there when I prayed through. The church was on fire. The Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving. I still remember what it felt like. I just felt it a little while ago. I feel it again right now. Let me tell you something. There may be a crowd gathered around him, but I know what he's done in my life. Thank you for coming to the church tonight. I know our schedule has been cattywampus in the month of May. And uh, I should have had uh, Sister Amanda send out a church text to remind folks we had church tonight. Uh, but it doesn't make a bit of difference. It doesn't make a bit of difference. Psalms chapter 23, verse number 5. I'm wondering what I preach to, bub. Nah, I'm just teasing. I know where a lot of folks are, but there's a lot I don't know where they're at. And uh, if you can't be here, it makes me feel really good if you shoot me a text or something and say, I can't be here for such and such. Because my mind goes crazy when I don't know. And rightfully so. Turn to your neighbor and say, even when I don't see it, he's working. And even when I don't feel it, 
He's working. He never stops. He never stops. He never stops. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now, I'm going to preach for a minute, but can I tell you something the Lord just, just spoke to me while I was sitting over there? I'm thrilled to death y'all are here. Thrilled to death y'all are here. But I, like I said, I have no clue what we have in church on Sunday mornings. I don't even ask. Once in a while, I text her like Wednesday and ask, what did we have? And I had a reason for it. I don't know how many we had this morning, but I know it's not many as it should be. All right? And the Lord, the, the, uh, I shared something with our ministry team here a month or so ago, maybe five weeks ago, and I shouldn't have shared it. Uh, I was corrected after the fact, and I shouldn't have shared it. But in the book of Judges, uh, the story of Gideon, he started out, I believe, with 30,000, 30,000 soldiers. Brother Pete, 20,000 left on their own. That left 10,000. Brother Billy, they said, we're afraid. We want to go back home. I want you to listen to me. The Lord just spoke this to me sitting right over there. This has been brewing in my spirit for a few weeks now. These guys will remember when I text them that. And then the Lord said, we need to, we need to weed it out a little bit more. And he took them down to the water. And without any prerequisites, 9,700 of them laid down on their belly and stuck their face in the water. Only 300 only 300 lapped up the water and kept watching. Let me tell you what the Lord just told me. The 20,000 that were afraid and the 9,700, you know where they were after the fight was over? Still on the side of Israel. They didn't go nowhere. They just weren't there for this fight. I said, they didn't go anywhere. They just weren't there for this fight. So don't you fret and don't you worry. Because some of them said, I'm scared. And some of them didn't measure up. But when this battle's won, when this battle is won, They'll be here. Lord, I thank you for this service. Thank you for these people. I thank you for your spirit that's been with us tonight. Thank you for the great worship we've enjoyed and, and had a good time with together. I pray, God, that you will rest upon everyone here. We cannot afford to go through the motions. Lord, let us stay in the fight. Let us stay in the fight. We're not losing. We're not backing down. We're not gone. Let us stay in the fight. It's in Jesus' name yeah, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I want to speak to you for a few minutes tonight on this subject. A table. Everybody say a table and a crew. A table and a crew. Psalm 23, beautiful, beautiful, timeless. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Anybody that hears that or hears it read, whether it be at a funeral, whether it be at a church service, maybe at a wedding, maybe at, a, at just a, a family get-together or whatever, the 23rd Psalm is, is uh, uh, probably uh, right up there at the top of the most well-known scriptures in the Bible. And whether by faith or by experience at the bountiful, sumptuous treatment of David by the Lord as a guest, as a treasured 
guessed. We don't know if it's because this is what David has experienced or we don't know if it's because of what David knows and expects from God. But the truth of the matter is, having come through the valley of the shadow of death, David said, I have a table prepared for me in the presence of mine enemies. Listen to the word of the Lord. Awake and watch ye afflicted and downtrodden. The Lord is not afraid. I said the Lord is not afraid to bless you in the presence of your enemies. The Lord is not afraid to pour out a blessing for you, to set a feast for you, to set a table for you, and you will be blessed in the presence of your enemies. I'm not talking about a snack, but a feast. I'm not talking about a fingertip blessing, but an outpouring of oil. And I'm not talking about a sip, but I'm talking about an overflowing cup. And if I remember correctly, Brother David, an overflowing cup means that I better stand or plan on staying a while. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord right now, and it may not look like you've won, but the Lord will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He will pour out the blessings and the power of the Holy Ghost on you, and he will, hey, he will fill your cup to overflowing, which means you'll get to stay there for a while. Somebody needs to rejoice in the fact that I am not forgotten and the Lord still knows my name. We may not have won this battle yet, but there's a table set before me in the presence of my enemies. Look here. In Joshua chapter number two, there was a promise made to a harlot. In Joshua chapter number two, there was a promise made to Rahab the harlot. It said everybody who stays in your house will be saved. The walls are gonna come down, but the only safe place in this city is in your house. And the Bible says and all the walls fell down flat and except across the horizon, there was only one little outcropping still standing and it was the house of Rahab. It was her little house and everybody in there was saved. I want you to know that she switched sides in the middle of a fight. She was in Jericho, but then she heard about the Lord and she switched sides and the Lord kept his promise to a little prostitute that he just got acquainted with. Somebody needs to hear me. The Lord will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now, the loneliness and feelings of abandonment that are so prevalent in scripture. David for sure. There was one time David said, they're all making fun of me. They're all asking me, where is your God? And I'm not sure. The feelings of abandonment, the feelings of there's nobody left to fight, the feelings of I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to be so presumptuous uh, and to assume, but I'm telling you that uh, we have not yet grasped the magnitude of what it means to have a table spread for us in the presence of our enemies. David, for sure, lonely, abandoned, hopeless, waiting on God, and it feels like nothing's happening. Elijah, he certainly comes to mind when he said... I, even I, am left alone. So I just well die. I'm all by myself. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm all by myself. I ain't got nobody. There's nobody with me. Jezebel is after me. She's probably going to get me. There ain't no food. It's nothing but a famine. Looks like I'm through dealing. But the Lord said, listen, buddy, that's not the way it's going to happen. And he said, by the way, I want you to hear me right now. I won't keep you very long tonight. We might get out of here like before dark. I want you to listen to me. I don't have a lot to say, but I, this is very important right now. It says, the Lord said, I have 7,000, 7,000, 7,000 that have not yet bowed their knee to Baal. I have 7,000 that have... I have 7,000 that have held on. I have 7,000 that the famine didn't take them out. I have 7,000 that aren't intimidated by Jezebel. I have 7,000 that are still holding true to me and obeying my law. Why do we feel like we have more in common with Elijah than the 7,000? 
Why do we feel like we can relate better to Elijah than we can to 7,000? Acts 18, verse number 9, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. And he said, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. Now I want to ask you a question. Who has ever read the verse of scripture in the Bible where Paul went to the Lord and said, I'm scared and I'm not sure I can preach anymore? It ain't in there. It ain't in there. Paul's full of faith. And Paul is, you know, Paul, you can't knock Paul down by throwing him in jail. God help me right now. But Brother Pete, the Lord came with a message for Paul in a vision. It said, don't be afraid and speak what I give you. Don't, don't be afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Why in the world would the Lord bring that word to the apostle Paul? Because in places that nobody else saw, perhaps he'd run into a bit of opposition. Perhaps he'd stepped on a few toes. No, one can have a hard time explaining how Elijah can leave Mount Carmel with 400 prophets of Baal and had just been killed and the prophets had sat at Jezebel's table and Brother David, fire just came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and when they ran back into the streets of Jezreel after the sound of abundance of rain, Jezebel said, tomorrow I'm killing you and he ran and hid. How is it that we can go from so high to so low? What does it do for us to know that the Apostle Paul wrote over half the New Testament, evangelized the entire province of Asia, probably as well known, made more of an impact than anyone than perhaps Jesus Christ upon the New Testament church? And the Lord came to Paul in a vision and said, don't be afraid. What does that mean? If the Lord tells you not to be afraid, what does that mean? You've been afraid. You have been afraid. And when he says, but speak, your fear was of preaching what thus saith the word of the Lord. And hold not thy peace. Now I want you to look at verse number 10. For I am with thee. For I am with thee. Don't be afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Brother Billy, I can't help but think as I read that, what else do you need? The Lord has come through and said, I'm on your side and I'm with you and ain't nobody going to be able to hurt you even though anybody comes against you. It's a whole other sentence that follows next when he says, for I have much people in this city. Look, I'm with you. No man shall attack you or harm you. For I have much people in this city. The Lord only added that because as relationship-based human beings as men and women who I don't care what you say, men and women are created to be relational beings. We are created to have relationship. And the Lord said, I'm with you and nobody that's gonna come against you is gonna harm you. And then he reinforces, reiterates, and shares with him, for I have much people in this city. What does that mean? It means Paul preach. It means Paul don't hold your peace. It means Paul be bold and be strong and be true because you're not alone. So who do I relate to? Paul, I want you to listen now, are much people that the Lord has enough confidence in, Brother McKinney, to use them as motivation for Paul. Oh. The Lord had enough confidence in them people to use them to encourage Paul. So who do I relate to? Paul or much people? 
It's important. And Paul stayed there a year and a half teaching. It's a word of encouragement to you tonight. Change who you identify with. Change who you identify with. Say, well, I want to be like Paul. Not here you don't. Not here you don't. Listen to me. I don't want to, uh, to burst your bubble and I don't want to hurt our feelings. Uh, but if there's a new Bible being written, uh, there's going to be more of us involved in the 7,000 and in the much people than there are Paul. Uh, we have got to get off of our desire to be elevated and put on a throne somewhere and realize we just got to get in the crowd and we've got to join together and we've got to hook ourselves together with people of like precious faith and we've got to do the work of the Lord because somewhere there's some Somebody lonely, somewhere there's somebody downtrodden, and I want him to be able to use me to encourage them. Amen. I'm looking for a Paul, and I'm looking for a Silas, and I'm looking for an Elijah, and I'm looking for an Elisha, and I'm looking for a David, and I'm looking for an Ezekiel, and I'm just looking for some people. I have much people in this city. Now, I, I ain't, and I don't mean this in disrespect, but I ain't talked to Brother McKinney about nothing that I struggle with. But he walks up to me right over here, pokes me, and says, person never know how much a pastor has to worry about, will he? And I said, no, sir. No, sir, they don't. But the Holy Ghost brought me here tonight to tell you we've got a hero complex that everybody has a desire to be important, that everybody has a desire to stand out, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I pray, Lord, that we all have a Cornelius-like experience where the, the windows of heaven are shaken with our prayers and with our giving. But in the reality of things, I come to tell you that there is more of us among the 7,000 than there are among Elijah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I just came with a word of encouragement tonight. Change who you identify with. I want to be a part of the encouragers. I want to be a part of the crew that come to the table that is prepared in the presence of my enemies. Do you have enough faith in God to sit down and eat? to come and dine, if you will, in the presence of your enemies. I've got a table and a crew. I come preaching tonight, we've got to have a change in perspective. We've got to have a change in reality. We've got to have, come to a changed conclusion. The same one David did. In Psalm 23 and 6 when he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're not alone. We're not alone. The enemy is coming. I have had more than... the. I have had things shared with me on Facebook lately. I have had, I have had uh, uh, on the preacher's forum that I'm on even today, there was another article. People are writing articles almost daily. I, I went to Lifeway yesterday and I got an apologetics Bible out, which is a Bible that, that is designed to defend doctrines. And one of the areas of it is twisted scripture. And one of their twisted scriptures, Brother Billy, is Acts 2.38. Uh, and they, they begin, they're, they're coming against what we preach and they're coming against what we teach and they're coming against what we believe. 
believe. Uh, and when you see those things and, and they, when you see people are, are the, e even getting on the internet and trying to say that Brother Wilson is lying about being at the United Nations and, and people begin to try to attack you. Brother David, if we're not careful, we'll want to circle the wagons uh, instead of embracing the fact that he can prepare a table for me. Uh, there is a blessing for me uh, in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, they're not going anywhere, Brother Pete. Uh, they're going to be against me. They were against me since who flung the chunk? Uh, and they're going to be against me when the trumpet sounds. Uh, but the Lord said uh, he had prepared a table for me uh, in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, the Lord said, don't be afraid, but speak uh, and hold not thy peace, for I have much people in this city. Please stand with me. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The greatest enemy that the devil can bring against you is the one in your imagination. Brother Billy, it's not a secret, it's not a mystery that the Lord understood that even his encouragement wasn't enough for Elijah, but he had to know he wasn't alone. There's a table and there's a crew. It may be 7,000. It may be much people. It just may be two or three. But Brother Billy, if I read the word correctly, that's all I need. I'm not forgotten. And even when I don't see it, he's working. And if I begin to become distracted by what I do see, I'm going to miss a table set for me in the presence of my enemies. I'm going to miss the cleanliness. That anointing my head with oil is the lavish treatment of a guest. Wiping away all the grime and the dust and the dirt and and it's a, a pouring out of the sweet smell and savor. And then, Brother David, if my cup sits there and they don't fill it up, that means it's time to go. But he said, my cup runneth over. I don't know if I've preached so short since my first message. But it's a clear word that we'll even, I want you to think about this and I'm going to let you pray for a minute. We will even get together and talk about how lone we are. We'll even get together and talk about how hard the struggle's been. When there's a table and much people, I 
I remember when we were little kids. How many of you remember when you wanted to be a crybaby and your mama wouldn't let you? You wanted to be pitiful and you would really like to just been left alone to be pitiful. I remember one time I wrote my mama a note, told her I'm running away. You don't love me. And it's all because she said no. That was against the rules. But Brother Billy, when I would get, get all... Oh, I'll stick my lip out, be all sad, sacking. Mama used to sing a song to us. And I got a feeling that she learned it at the house when she was coming up. Maybe she didn't. But she would say something. It more would make me mad, Brother Pete, because I, be, I wanted to be pitiful. She made fun of me. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat worms. Anybody ever had that happen to you before? Your mama sung it to you too? I wish she would have just been quiet and let me be pitiful. I wanted to be mad. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, ugh. Reckon the Lord sometimes wants to say that to us. Nobody loves you. Everybody hates you. Why don't you go eat worms? I've just healed you and I've just delivered you and I've just blessed you and I've just showed up and, and, that old hag Jezebel can just say, rah, and you go, hide, Lord, I need to die because I'm all by myself and don't nobody love me. I'm being a little bit facetious, but it's real close. It's real close. Thou preparest the table before me. I'm really sorry. We're going to pray. We're, we are going to pray. Y'all can't sing that song for altar call. We're going to make it, folks. We're not just going to make it. We're going to see the vision of the Lord come to pass. We're going to do it together.